Hey everyone, I'm Greg Smith, a product manager here at Oculus. I'm excited to talk to you today about how you can leverage mixed reality capture to help folks discover and play your game. So why would you actually care about this talk? Why does it matter to you? So I'm assuming first that you've made an amazing game. Now the next step is, how do we get folks to discover it and play it? We're going to talk a little bit about how there's a huge opportunity with gaming video to connect with your audience before, during, and after they play your game. Also, we're gonna go into why mixed reality capture can be the way to connect with this audience. And then finally, we're gonna dig a little bit into how you can take advantage of mixed reality capture in your game. So there are a lot of ways you can promote your game. And ultimately, it's about how you can get your game in front of the right audience who will want to buy it and play it. For the last decade, gaming video has grown like crazy. There are hundreds of millions of gamers watching gaming video now. And these are all potential players that could be introduced to your game. Another way of thinking about this, users can only spend so much time while wearing a headset. So what are other services that you can reach them? How can you do this authentically? To talk about a couple of opportunities for gaming video, you have social video, like you see on Facebook. You have video on demand on YouTube. Look at these as reaction videos and let's plays or live video where Twitch is obviously a huge player here. And in all these cases, this is an awesome way to first of all, drive awareness, help people know that your game exists. And as they get more interested, help give them the information they need to make a purchase decision. And then finally, this is a great chance to either reintroduce people to new content that you may have or to re-engage lapsed users. And honestly, console, PC, and mobile games have been taking advantage of this for years. So let's agree that gaming video is a great opportunity, but how does that apply to VR? You know, what works and what doesn't? Okay, think about the last time you were in VR playing a game. It could even be your game. How did you feel? Probably pretty awesome. You're dodging bullets, you're climbing Machu Picchu, you're slicing blocks with sabers. Maybe you're even casting a line into a beautiful river. But let's say there's someone outside of VR watching. They can see you, they're in the room, but they can't see the world. How do you think you look without that context? Probably not so awesome. On the flip side, let's say folks can see what you're seeing in VR, but they don't see you. They don't see how you're reacting to your experience. They're losing that immersion that you're feeling right now. The key here again is context. It's the combination of the virtual world, but also the person inside of it and what they're experiencing. Now, the good news is, this is where mixed reality capture comes into play. Mixed reality capture, or MRC, enables us to create a 2D video of a person in their VR environment, complete with the objects in the foreground and background fully synchronized to the user's movements. In my opinion, it's the best way to convey a person's experience in VR on a 2D surface. Now, technically, how MRC works, in your game, you're gonna spin up a second camera in the scene that's been optimized for performance. Now this camera is actually calibrated against a camera in the real world uh, in the same space as the person who's in VR. And this can be everything from webcams to full-blown production cameras, BYO camera. Now the in-game camera actually captures layers in front of and behind the player, and they're setting those frames back and forth uh, to a PC where you can use compositing tools like Open Broadcaster software or OBS where those are actually composited to create the final image or video. Once you have that, these can easily be streamed or captured as a video on demand. We know we can create better video with MRC that creates, um, or rather conveys, the context and magic of VR. And there's this big gaming video opportunity, but you know, does that actually mean anything? You know, you're very busy, you have a lot of things to do, why should you invest here? Well, in some of our early experiments that we've done, we've actually shown a increase in purchase conversion uh, when showing MRC trailers to a person versus a very similar non-MRC trailer on a product details page. 
We're gonna to continue to explore more here, but these early results are very, very promising. Now, I wanna do a slight segue here. So we've been talking a lot about MRC, but really what we're trying to do here is help folks enjoying your game share that experience with folks around them, whether they're in the room or on the internet. In regards to the in the room experience, we are seeing a huge part of our population using casting as a way to make their VR experiences more social. Now, if you're not familiar with casting, this enables you to mirror what someone in the headset is seeing to either a phone or supported smart devices. Now, casting may not be as advanced as mixed reality capture, but it really goes a long way to convey what a person right in front of you is seeing and experiencing in VR. Um, I kind of like to think about it as real world MRC. You see the person, you see what they see, and you kind of put it together. Now, where this matters to you is, what we've seen is our users tend to pick games to cast that are really easy for new users to pick up, or they work really well in a party context. You can imagine your user has a new VR headset, they're so excited about it, and they wanna show it to their friends and family. And they're choosing games that they think those friends or family members are going to have the most enjoyment with. So when you're thinking about designing your game, consider how easy it is for someone new to put on a headset and experience it. Or, in a different way, think about what information would you need to convey for someone watching this casted experience so they can follow along and want to put on the headset as well. Okay, so we believe there's an opportunity, we believe MRC is great, and we've seen data that proves that MRC is effective. How do you now take advantage of that? We're gonna focus on two main areas here. The first is watchability, and the next part is how do we actually integrate this uh, and actually help you produce content around it. So for watchability, there are a few things you should be thinking about. The first is, what information do you want to convey to someone who's actually not in the headset? The big advantage here is that by having a second camera in your scene, you choose what they get to see. Well, there may be some things that make sense for the person in the headset to see because they have the context of playing the game and their journey so far through the experience. Someone tuning into a website or to a live stream may not have that. So really think about what would someone need if they just saw your game for the first time. The second thing you want to think about is locomotion. How does your player move through the environment? Now, the first thing you want to design for, obviously, is a great experience for the player. But some locomotion methods, like controller-based locomotion or teleporting, can have some interesting effects when it comes to MRC. If you're not careful, sometimes it can seem that the player is actually gliding along through your environment like they're on a sheet of ice. Now, one way you could solve this is to just add art assets that make it look like your player is wearing roller skates, but that's probably not gonna work for most games. Now, I'm not saying that you should change what makes sense for your game design, but it's just good to think about how someone might be captured and what guidance you might wanna give the player when they're creating MRC content. Now, the next thing you want to think about is the actual objects in the scene. One of the big benefits of MRC is that you're able to synchronize objects around the player that move when they move. But you should think about what you want to see and what you shouldn't see. Now, in our user res research, we've seen that, you know, if there's a little bit of drift uh, in terms of the objects in the player's hands and what you see in the video, that's okay. But things you should be more careful about is whether you want to actually show hands in the video itself. Um, what we've seen is that users tend to be a little bit more sensitive to that if you actually see a hand that's not mapped to the actual user's hand. Another thing you wanna think about here is the effects on the second camera. You know, you have different shaders and post-processing effects set up for the person in VR, but do you need to actually leverage those same ones for someone watching at home? It's a good trade-off to think about here when it comes to performance and how the content is actually going to look. Now, the last thing you should think about here, again, this is about objects in the scene. Remember, we're spinning up a separate camera, which is, depending on how far the physical camera is from the person, pretty close or pretty far away. And think about what objects may actually occlude the player from this camera. Now, we don't want you to rewrite your scene graph, but especially if you have tight rooms, think about how you can make sure that walls don't get in the way of this content actually seeing the player. So that's how you make your content watchable. Now let's talk about the flip side of how you actually integrate this into your game and how you can create content around it. We've spent a lot of time making it as easy as possible for you to integrate MRC. We have integrations in both UE4 as well as Unity. 
Um, and in Unity in particular, it's especially easy. Just make sure you're on close to the latest version. Now, if you've decided to roll your own engine, we also offer native library support. It will take a little bit longer since you have to build some of the pieces that are in the UE4 and Unity integrations, uh, but it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you want to approach it. Now, assuming that you have actually integrated your game, the next, next step is how do you make content? Right now, on the Oculus dev site, we have a tool that supports mixed reality capture for both Quest as well as Rift, and it actually was used to make some of the trailers that you've seen during this talk. This is free to download, and you can use this to actually create content to help showcase your own game. Now, more importantly, this tool is going to be coming out very, very soon targeted towards content creators. And while we want you to make as much content yourself, and we definitely think it's a great value, um, one of the big benefits of gaming video is scale. How do you get folks streaming amazing content from your game and helping reach your customers across a variety of surfaces? So I hope this talk was helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at mrcfeedback at fb.com. We're so excited about all the games on Oculus integrating MRC and helping share VR with everybody in a way that captures the experience and the magic of wearing a headset. So thanks again for listening, and make sure to check out our dev site to start making your game ready for mixed reality capture. Thanks.